So, so far in this course, we've looked at some specific examples of discrete time Markov chains. We've looked at the simple random walk, we've looked at more general random walks, and we've looked at the gambler's ruin. But now we're going to try and look at the general theory of general Markov chains. And so, to define a Markov chain in general, we need to know two things. First, we need to know where the Markov chain starts from, which might be a certain state or might be a state chosen at random according to some initial distribution. So we need to know where we start. And secondly, we need to know how we move through the Markov chain. That is, given that we're at some state i, what's the probability we move to some other state j? And so those are the two things we're going to need to define a Markov chain. So we start from x0, and so the initial distribution is the probability that x0 equals i for each state i, and it will be convenient uh, to call that lambda i. So obviously if we start from a certain state with certainty, uh, then lambda i will be 1 for one of the i's and 0 for all the others, but we could be picking the beginning state x0 according to any old distribution lambda. So that's the uh, initial distribution. And then we're also interested in the transition probabilities. So the transition probabilities are the probabilities that we go from one state i to another state j. So uh, that's the probability that x n plus 1 equals j, given x n equals i, because that's the probability that we move from being at i at time n over to j at time n plus 1. So for example, let's think about what these are for the simple random walk, s r w, simple random walk. Well, we said that for the simple random walk, uh, we always start from state 0, so we have... Uh, Lambda 0 equal 1, and lambda i equals 0, for i not equal to what to 0, meaning we start from state 0 with probability 1, and we start from anywhere else with probability 0. And the transition probabilities for the simple random walk, xn plus 1 equals j, given xn equals i, well, if j is equal to i plus 1, that would mean we would be moving up a step. And so you should remember that that has probability p. If j were equal to i minus 1, that would mean we were moving down a step. So you should remember that that has probability q. And we can't do any other steps. We either have to go up one or down one. So otherwise, we have probability 0. Now, an interesting thing to notice here is that the right-hand side of this expression all these, they don't depend on n. That is, the transition probabilities are the same for all time n. The probability that we move up one or move down one is p or q, and they're fixed for all time. And that is called being time homogeneous. Time homogeneous means the probability of making any given move is the same at whatever time it happens. And in fact, almost everything that we cover in this course is going to be time homogeneous. And so if we're dealing with something with time homogeneous, we can give the transition probabilities a name that doesn't depend on n. So this one up here, the probability that we move from i to j, we can just call that p i j. Right? And we don't have to write n anywhere in that because pij, the probability of moving from i to j, is the same for any n. So that will be some convenient notation. Worth noting that, of course, because pij is a probability, it must be greater than or equal to 0. Also, once we're at i, we have to go somewhere. So it's also the case that the sum over j of pij equals 1 for all i. Because that's from i summing up all the probabilities of moving somewhere, including pii, the probability of staying at i itself. And those probabilities all have to add up to 1. So if we put all these together, we can get our main definition of a 
discrete time Markov chain. And that definition is this, definition 5.1. Let lambda i be a probability distribution, so that's going to be our initial distribution. Let pij uh, have those properties that we want, uh, being that they're greater than or equal to 0 and they sum to 1. Uh, and then we have this rule. The first line is the initial distribution. Initial distribution. And then the second line, the first equality, is telling us we have the Markov property. Right, that's telling us that it only matters where we are now. And the history, all this stuff, doesn't come in. And then we have this PIJ, the transition probability, that we just discussed. So that's our definition. Uh, to try and get a hang of uh, what these mean, uh, it's useful to have some other notation. One is that all these PIJs, these transition probabilities, it will turn out to be really useful to write them down in a matrix. So the transition matrix, uh, which we will call capital P, is the matrix of all the PIJs. It will turn out later that it will be useful to have those written down in a matrix. So, for example, let's suppose we wanted to know for a Markov chain what is the probability that x0 equals i and x1 equal j. Well, let's think. That means first we have to start from i to get x0 equals i. So the probability that we start from i is lambda i. That's using the initial distribution lambda. And then we have to move from i to j to get to j at time x equals 1. And that's pij. Right? So those two terms there. Lambda i, we start from i. And pij, we move on to j. And that gives us the probability that x0 is i and x1 is j. Similarly, a slightly trickier one. Probability that xn plus 2 equals j and xn plus 1 equals k, given xn equals i. So that's given that xn equals i, so we can assume we're already there. And so to fulfill the conditions, we need to go to xn plus 1 equals k on our next step, and xn plus 2 equals j on the step after that. So that means our first step has to be from i to k, which has probability p i k, and then our next step has to be from k to j. We get pkj, so that's pik times pkj. In the next subsection, we'll see a bigger example of a Markov chain.